Now it's time for our 360 round. For that, let's bring in our panel to discuss the latest in large language models and the race that is ChatGPT versus Gemini. Joining us, Shai Balor, the chief market strategist at Futurum Equities, and Thomas I, the founder of The Sevens Report. Thank you both for being with us. You know, we've, we got this Gemini release. It came out to pretty rave reviews. Then we hear about this code red from Sam Altman over at OpenAI. And now hearing rumblings that ChatGPT may be putting out a new model as soon as tomorrow. You know, Shai, I'll start with you. You know, what are your thoughts overall just on one against the other as they currently stand? I mean, there is a big shift happening in AI right now, and that gen AI models are starting to behave more like commodity infrastructure than the special software that was intended just a year or two ago. What I mean by that is the cost to run them is drastically falling. The performance gap between the models is also closing. So the moat no longer is the model itself. It's who can distribute AI at the largest scale across hardware, apps, devices, and enterprise workflows. Sam Altman knows this better than anyone else. And that's exactly why he called it Code Red last week. If ChatGPT is not clearly better than Google's Gemini inside Search or Android, or better than Microsoft's Copilot inside Windows or Office, or even better than Meta's AI inside Instagram or WhatsApp, then people will not switch. So I think that's exactly what's happening right now with the dynamic on Sam Altman's getting the second gear of like Code Red, we need to adjust because if open AI cannot beat them on quality, reliability and costs, then willingness to pay will collapse. And that is a real threat to open AI. And Tom, I know from your notes, your argument's pretty clear. Gemini 3 is now better than the current chat GPT. There are a lot of benchmarks and research to back up your thesis there. How big do you believe that performance gap is right now? And why is it important for real world usage behavior? So I think the performance gap is pretty sizable. I think that the Gemini 3 update really caught a lot of people by surprise. And what's important for investors is to not look at this as just a one-off event, right? This is a culmination of an enormous race that's been occurring for nearly three years. Three years ago, ChatGPT came on the scene, burst onto the scene, and and sort of caught all of the major tech companies flat-footed, right? And since then, a lot of the spending that we have been seeing, this CapEx spending, buying semiconductors, is that the major tech companies were trying to catch up. Well, if Google has caught up and surpassed ChatGPT and they can't leapfrog them, then that's a very big potential issue for, for OpenAI to begin with. But from a usage standpoint, it's much more positive for AI adoption because Google is obviously the market leader in search. It's much more natural for the vast majority of us to go to Google and use Gemini AI, especially if it's essentially built in on the back end than it is to go to ChatGPT because a lot of what you're seeing is bifurcation. So the fact that the, the market leader in search, by far and away the largest market leader, now has potentially the most useful AI is a tremendous game changer and very positive for overall AI adoption, very good for Google specifically. All right, Shai, I want to come back to this argument you made about Gen AI moving into this commodity infrastructure here. What does OpenAI need to do to not get boxed out by Google, Microsoft, even maybe Meta as a part of this conversation? Because they already control some of the channels that you've mentioned, workload, hardware, operating systems. To be honest, like the answer is going to be AGI, but we are a ways away from that. I do think that they need to start adjusting their approach on building a system where intelligence gets priced into every action that they do. And they could almost be the centralized marketplace for a bunch of different applications that want to go there and they can start partnering up with all these horizontal SaaS or application companies, uh, try to find a way where every inter AI interaction has a somewhat of a cost and be the cheapest meter that runs across all these different types of functions. But it is a very tall ask because when you have all these ecosystems, like uh, I mentioned, that um, like Meta controls billions of people spending their time on their apps. You have also um, Am um, Gemini essentially trying to sell. They're not selling a standalone AI product. They're building a system where everything is into their ecosystem, and they have the cheapest meter to use AI across the board. And that's exactly why their Gemini 3 is such a chef's kiss, essentially, to the model race, because <laughs> they have the cheapest economics for it, and also they have the best distribution. Those are the two levers to pull for model quality. So I do think that OpenAI probably will have to start p 
pivoting towards more intelligence than committing to $1.4 trillion of spend over the course of the next decade. And I think there is also a new somewhat Sam Altman premium risk now that's being signed by the market. Oracle is the best example of that because uh, they're taking one of the largest data center build outs in, in, in the industry, mostly to support open AI. And they've gotten penalized the past two months because of that Sam Altman premium risk. So now it's not gonna be an easy lever to pull of just spend, spend, spend. They have to be more conscious of what they're spending money towards. And they kind of need to have the meter of how they're gonna pull the profitability a lot sooner than probably Sam thought he had to six months ago. And Tom, last question to you. We're running a little bit tight on time, but we got some new data from Sensor Tower showing that Gemini's monthly active users are up 30% since August. ChatGPT only up 5%. Now, we know that we're getting a new ChatGPT likely this week. Do you think that that is enough to reverse these trends, or have we already started to signal a permanent shift? Unless it's much better, it's probably a permanent shift. I mean, this is a code red for ChatGPT. There is a long history of first market movers in new technologies not surviving till the end. And I realize that's a bit parabolic to say, but just look at Prodigy and look at MySpace. First movers in the end were leapfrogged and didn't last. So I think this is very serious for OpenAI. They need to, they need to put out something awesome. We appreciate you both being with us to talk about the ongoing uh, chat models with ChatGPT and Gemini. Appreciate you both. Shai Balor from Futurum Equities and Thomas Say from the Sevens Report.